But anyway, I want to talk to y'all about this book because it talks about aging and dieting. And, well, not just dieting, but aging and diet, okay? And I think this is a really important subject, and I think it happens a lot. And that is, it says that um, as you get older, your body's energy needs to draw. At the same time, demands for nutrients increase. And new studies indicate some of these can slow the aging process, okay? And I've just highlighted the things that I felt like we could talk about, okay? Uh, and, and things that I think we should work on um, as friends and with the CDC. And uh, I just wanted to talk to y'all about them and, because I think it's a real issue, okay? It says that... Uh, Let's see, it says, aging is inevitable, okay? And many of us get degenerative changes that prevail among the elderly if preventative steps are not taken. Now, you don't even have to be elder to have degenerative changes. I mean, because I have them and I'm 48, and I started having them by the time I was 40, so... This is not just for elderly people, um, but it, it does apply to the majority of us. And it says that, it will tell you in here if medical research has proven something or if it hasn't proven something. And it says that medical research confirms that good nutrition can prevent or at least slow down such debilitating conditions as osteoporosis, diabetes, heart disease, and it says, in fact, the report estimates that one-third to one-half of the health problems of people over the age of 65 are related to their diet. Wait, let me read y'all this. It says that this is what I, where I'm going more than anything, is I noticed with my teenagers, if they go into the kitchen, they're, and I'm just going to be real, they're too lazy to cook anything. And I mean, you may feel this way because I've been there before. You go in the kitchen, you're hungry, you open the refrigerator, oh, there's something in the fridge. There'll be apples, there'll be oranges, but you don't want them. You know, you want something junky, you want something more fun. So then you open the pantry, and kids will be more apt to eat cereal, ramen, uh, my kids don't even want a sandwich. Uh, they want to get in their car and go down to McDonald's. That's why they both want jobs, so they can get spending money to go buy junk food if they want it. Um, now, the elderly are in the same position. Now, let me tell you why. Because it's not just because they're teenagers. It's because they don't feel good. Now, this is where the problem is with elderly people. They don't feel good. And not just the elderly, but us in our even in our forties and fifties, if we have these degenerative diseases, you know, our feet hurt and we're tired and we're exhausted all the time. And we don't want to get up and get in the kitchen. And oh Lord, the thoughts of going into the grocery store scares us to death. We gotta walk that entire grocery store. And, you know, it just seems like, oh, my gosh, it's just so much work, you know. And it's hard on them, okay. So what happens is they lose nutrition. And as they lose their nutrition, they lose their energy, and they also lose part of their mind. Now, I'm going to read you a little bit of this and tell you what I'm talking about. It says the elderly are the most poorly nourished group of all Americans. There are many reasons for this. A person's appetite and the senses of taste and smell decline with age, making food considerably less appealing. Many older people experience difficulty chewing, just like mama. In addition, heartburn, constipation, lactose intolerance, other digestive problems increase with age and contribute to poor nutrition. The loss of a partner or difficulty
difficulty in shopping or preparing meals may result in a person's subsiding on tea, toast, sweets, canned soups, and other convenience foods that provide little nutrition. Now, those of y'all who are listening to me, if you're elderly or you're older, this is ringing a bell with y'all. I got in the line behind an elderly man the other day, and I looked at what he put up on the, the shelf, I mean, on the cart in front of me to buy his groceries, and it was exactly that, crackers, soup, Little Debbie's, all these convenience foods. Now, had he lost his spouse? Possibly. Um, there's many of y'all that watch that are alone now that used to have a partner. Um, and there's only one in the house. And you think, why should I cook? It's only me, you know? Uh, so you do. You survive on these convenience foods. Now, do I think canned soups and stuff are not nutritious? It's according to which one you're buying, okay? And the reason I say that is because when my mama lived in the nursing home, well, she don't live in a nursing home. She lives in a private home. But but she lived in a care home in Cedartown where we were, and she didn't like their food, and she ate Little Debbie's candy, sweets, canned soups. I was buying her a Campbell's Chunky, uh, she liked the chicken and dumplings and all that good stuff. And I'm not kidding, she ate it constantly. Was her mind good? No. Was her health that good? No. Now, when she started eating uh, the puree foods where she lives now, because it was all the food groups, she started getting stronger. I'm going to tell you, them insurers made all the difference in the world. So let me say this. If you're going to eat the convenience foods and you're just not going to get up and go the extra mile to make yourself something nutritious and you're elderly, you need your nutrition. If you want to think well, if you want to continue to drive, if you want to continue to read and understand what you're watching on TV, trust me, you need the nutrition. If you're not going to get it yourself, please at least drink one insure a day. I know they're full of calories, but if you will just get rid of a couple of little daddies and replace it with an insure, it will do wonders for your mind and your body and your health. Because I've seen it with my own eyes with my mother. It is absolutely amazing. Now, uh, it's a blessing. So, with that said, some of us need motivation. I am 49 and I need to be motivated because I'm not what I used to be. The thoughts of going into Walmart just drives me nuts because now there's super Walmarts and you've got to walk the whole dog on the entire store because they've got stuff, they've got the groceries on one side and the health care on the other. So you absolutely can't park on one side of the store and go in and get what you need without walking across to the other side. Now, when you got feet like I do, that's really hard to do. So, stop going to the Walmart if you can't walk the Walmart. Or get in a buggy that is an electric buggy. But whatever you do, go. Buy some fruits. Buy some vegetables. Get out and get something nutritious. And don't just live off junk, okay? If you're elderly or if you're a teenager or in your 20s, now, see, the difference in if you're in your teens or 20s is that you're still young enough that if you go without that nutrition, good Lord, I ate candy bars and instant grits and was going to an engineering school and working full-time at the same time and still managed to do it all and pass and do all that. But when you're older, you can't do that anymore, okay? You don't have the same body you did when you were 20 years old. And it makes a difference. Now, it says, and this is really cool. Listen to this. Um, another thing says a number of older people living on a fixed income usually can afford nutritious foods. As fresh fruit, 
fruits and vegetables and fish and meat. Also, some of them fall victim to nutrition whackery or engage in misguided self-treatment with high-dose vitamins and minerals, which everybody makes such a big deal out of today. But if you just ate the right things, you get tons of it. And they also constipate you. I'm going to throw that in. These crap, these, if you're going to take a supplement and you get a supplement in a hard format that's not a capsule or a liquid, uh, then it will constipate you. All it does is fall down in the bottom of your stomach and sit there, and it barely even does anything for you. Uh, so that's a big deal. You need to be real careful about all these vitamins and supplements. Um, it says that your muscle mass decreases and fatty tissue increases and metabolism slows down and you require fewer calories. Now, if we do not cut back on food intake, we are likely to gain weight, increasing the risk of heart disease, diabetes, and osteoarthritis. Now, this is where I'm going. Now, once you get my age and you don't cut down, continually gain weight, like I've done since I, uh, Denise says that the ceiling fan is interfering. Lord, and you're just now telling me. Um, but anyway, if you don't cut down, then you just gradually keep gaining weight, which is what I've done. My metabolism changed eight years ago. I pretty much gained uh, around six to six to eight pounds per year. So I went from 140 pounds to 200, now 204 pounds. Um, instead of decreasing my calorie intake, I've, uh, I've uh, just continued to eat like I always have. I don't eat near as much. I mean, I never pile a plate of food on my plate, but it doesn't matter. I'm just, it's because of the kind of foods I was eating. But the, I, I'm not even fussing it, y'all, so much about the kinds of foods that you're eating. Because, But I just want you to understand that nutrition matters. And it matters the older you get, the, the, the more important it is. Uh, like so many people think it's so important to give a baby nutrition. And it is because their little brains are, you know, forming and they're growing and all that. But it's just as important when you get older uh, so that you stay healthy. Now, these are practical tips I'm going to give you, okay? Um, and Debbie says she thought the wind was blowing. Uh, practical tips, plan meals for regular times during the day to, rather than snacking. And if you do snack, select fruits and vegetables and other high nutritious foods. Let me say this about our little uh, daily um, food group. Do you know the first two weeks me and Chris completely ate every snack and everything on my menu? We were eating six times a day, three meals and three snacks. We were losing weight. This week we've been so busy, we've only ate the meals and very little snacks. We have not overdone on calories, but we're not losing weight. It is better to eat your snacks. It is better to eat a little bit all day, and that just goes to prove it. As much as we were eating, everybody was like, I couldn't eat that, and I'd gain weight, and honey, we were losing weight. But it was speeding up our metabolism. And the last few days, we've been so busy, we've had to be out and out, out in the car, and instead of taking a snack with us, we didn't. And now our, we've leveled. The last three days, we've just been leveled. So it's very important to snack. Okay, it says, um, strive to make your meals pleasurable, even if you're eating alone. Now, a lot of y'all are alone. It says, set the table or prepare an attractive tray. Turn on your favorite music to improve your mood. Anything that'll help you. If it's eating out on the porch, if it's having breakfast outside, because it's summertime, it's hot in the evening. If it's, um... You know, like they said, turning on some music, turning on your favorite, whatever. Try to try to eat. Um, it says if you dislike eating alone, organize regular potluck meals. 
uh, with friends or neighbors or consider joining an organization that provides an opportunity to dine with uh, others. And let me strongly suggest this to you if you're elderly and you live alone. The best thing you could do, and let me try to find this in here. Um, I'm going to read this story to you, okay? Now, I'm reading out of this book, and I know this might seem boring to some. It's very important, and very important to some, uh, for some of y'all. Foods that harm and foods that heal, okay? Now, it says, case study, Joe, a 71-year-old retired accountant had never paid much attention to shopping and cooking. His wife had always taken care of those chores. When his wife died, Joe found mealtimes increasingly trying. He didn't like to eat alone in restaurants, although now and then he'd go on an excursion to pick up a sandwich from the neighborhood deli. Joe tried frozen TV dinners a few times, but rarely enjoyed the way they tasted. About the only time he'd ever had a real meal was when friends invited him to eat with them. Otherwise, Joe's diet consisted of cold cereal and canned beans or soup. Over several months, Joe came down with a number of colds. He often felt tired and listless. Feelings that he attributed to lingering sadness and loneliness after his wife's death. When Joe's sister Alyssa came to visit for a few days, she was appalled by his diet and emotional state. You're not getting any vegetables or fruits, she said. No wonder you feel so run down and catch one cold after the other. Still, she realized that Nagin would not get Joe out of his doldrums. He needed motivation and guidance. Elsa found that the local senior center had a daily lunch program. Even better, she learned the center also offered a cooking course. Elsa finally convinced Joe to check out the latter. Happily, the cooking class turned out to be exactly what Joe needed. He enjoyed learning to make it. He enjoyed learning to make interesting meals and tricks. A trip to the supermarket gave Joe insight into buying fresh produce. Some fellow students also, without partners, uh, they all began to cook and eat together. All the urging of the class instructor, Joe helped organize weekly home cooking sessions in which class members took turns playing host. Between sessions, Joe practiced his new food shopping and preparation skills as he later confided to his sister the cooking class helped change his life. Joe not only found new friends and an enjoyable hobby, but he also began to pay more attention to eating a balanced and nutritious diet. Now, some of y'all might think this is so goofy, but I know that a lot of my viewers are elderly people or disabled people or people, they really are. A lot of y'all are foodies, I personally believe when I read this, because you're lacking nutrition. And one reason is because you like to see people cook and you love food, but another reason may be that you're craving food, that you're craving these nutritions these nutrients and these things that you're seeing. Now, I don't want you to get mad at me because not everybody's that way. But if you are alone and if you're not getting a good nutritional, you know, intake, it would be very normal for you to want to watch food videos during the day or at night. Uh, it would be satisfying for you, okay, if you're lacking stuff. Now, does it mean that every one of my viewers are lacking nutrition, uh, no, but it does mean that a if a lot of my viewers, the majority, y'all, of my viewers on YouTube, majority, are over 40, from 40 to like probably 80 years old, 
and uh, a lot of my viewers on Facebook are disabled. I mean, all ages of dis dis disabled disability people. And we those two categories put you in the slot, even if you're not elderly, if you're disabled, you're still in the slot that I'm talking to, okay? What I want to tell you is that I love you. When I read this, I'm gonna cry, but I thought of all my viewers, and I'm gonna post this on CBC, I guess, but I want you to understand that I care about you, that I love you, that I want you to eat healthy, I want you to feel good, as good as you can, because I know what it feels like to feel bad, okay? I've been there and done that, and I still feel bad. Like today, my husband is out walking, and I can barely keep going. And I think to myself, oh, my gosh, how wonderful, wonderful, wonderful it would be to be able to get out and walk, to walk. How wonderful it would be to be able to go to Walmart and just walk. And I can't, I can walk, but it, I pay for it, okay? It's not, it's not okay with my feet and my legs anymore. And we need to love on each other and encourage each other to cook and not just cook the junk that's fun to watch, but also cook the good stuff because it's good for us. Like an example, I love tomatoes. Love them. Until I got this book, I didn't realize how bad tomatoes were for me. Tomatoes are horrible for me. Why? Because of the kind of arthritis I have, I should not be eat. I should not eat a lot of tomatoes. I should not uh, make a lot of tomato dishes. I should not. I mean, I think it's fun to have it every once in a while, but um, when you figure out what's better for your body, then, you know, you should try it. Uh, and we should listen, and we should love each other. We should encourage each other. If you're out there and you're alone, know that you're not alone. I'm here, okay? Um, I'm always here, but I would love for you if you can, even if you're disabled, you can go to the senior center, I'm sure. Try to find some friends. Try to find somebody to dine with. Try to, if you've got family, call, call try, just say, look, you know, I sit here every day by myself. Um, I would love to have you over. You know, why don't you come over and let's have a sandwich? I mean, just a salad with some but grilled chicken on it. You know how easy it is to do? Um... I mean, we need to uh, encourage each other to get out and to find a friend or a few friends. And I know that you won't get along with everybody, but you may have to go through two or three to get one that you can really click with. But I'm here to encourage you, encourage you to, if you're sitting where, where I'm talking about, and because it gets depressing when you can't physically do what you want to do, and then when your nutrition goes down, your mind goes down, your body goes down, it just makes it worse, okay? It really makes it worse. So try your best to get yourself up, you know, and go, go. Go to the grocery store. Go to the fruit section. You know, when you get home, you'll be tired, there's times that I go to the grocery store and I come home and I just leave them on the table to the next day. But don't leave them the next day. Get your butt up. Put them up. You know, prep some of it ahead of time. Don't do everything in one day. Don't overdo it. Don't go to the grocery store. Come home. Prep your vegetables. I mean, you're not 20 years old anymore. Now, the, those of y'all that are watching that are 20, y'all can work circles around all of us old people. You can do everything in one day. But I just want to tell you that um, I care about you and I love you. And when I read that, it, I thought a lot about my fans. I really did. Um, 
But anyway, I just talk and talk. Um, but I've seen some of y'all say that y'all were there. You know, you're alone. Um, and I think it makes a big difference. And if you don't have a pet, go get one. It'll give you a reason to get out of the bed in the morning and have to get out and make them go pee. Um, and if you can't go walk a dog or you don't have a back yard that's fenced and you can't uh, physically do it, then get a cat, okay? Because a cat is a lot easier to take care of than a dog. And if you're allergic to cats, if you get the cats that are um, like tuxedo cats like mine, they're a lot less the type of cat that you would be uh, have allergic reactions to. They have a, they have a, a coat that's more like a rabbit. Make sure and not get a long-haired or coarse-haired cat. Um, but anyway, you need something to love on. You need some reason to get up out of the bed. You need uh, some... If it's not for anybody but for me, come on here and say, Tammy, you're not going to believe what I did today. I went to the grocery store. Tammy, you're not going to believe what I did today. You know, I prepped a bunch of veggies and put them in the refrigerator. I mean, if you're not going to go out to a senior center, center if you're not going to go to a church, if you're not going to go somewhere where you can find some friends, then talk to me. I'd rather talk to you any day than, I mean, I, I don't mind talking to y'all. That's what you don't realize. When I first started my cooking show, I got tons of personal messages. I couldn't really get to them all. And now, I hardly ever get a personal message. Uh, it's okay to message me. And if it takes me a day or two, don't get mad at me. I just physically haven't, or, I mean, seriously, I stay busy. I, I mean, when you got two teenagers, a husband, a mom, and three, we'll see, four animals, you know, but eventually I'm going to sit down and read it and I'm going to respond. Um, Debbie says she puts together puzzles. I love puzzles. I love them. Um, they're great. Reading is great. A lot of people like TV, but I've never been a TV person. Do you see how quiet it is in here? When Chris walks out the door, the TV goes off. I hate it. I like watching shows. But I don't like watching regular TV. And here I am thinking about being on a TV show. <laughs> but you know, game shows are fun. I like to watch game shows. Every time I go to Mama's, we watch game shows. Velda says she can't take care of a pet, but she does coloring and she loves it. Velda, share some of your coloring with us sometime. You know, um, if you're part of Colored Valley Cook's group, you can share a photo and if you wanted to show a color photo, share a color photo. I don't mind. Um, Debbie says she went and spent time with a new grandson. It was the first time she's been in the out of the house in over a month. I'm excited for you, Debbie. You are a sweetheart. I love talking to you on here. I love all my friends on here. I was telling my brother, you know, because sometimes people will go, Facebook isn't real. Those people aren't your friends. And I'm like, yes, they are. They are my friends, and they are real people. There are real people on Facebook. There's a lot of drama that should not be on Facebook. There's a lot of things on Facebook, and we really shouldn't do anything unless we're doing it to encourage and edify people. So remember that when you post things on Facebook, and I'm not talking about just my posts. I'm talking about all posts. I'm talking about these posts where people are bashing people. I mean, it's just rude. Um, let's encourage each other, okay? I love all y'all. I love seeing y'all on here. Y'all don't realize how much I love seeing your names on the comments. I really know your names. Um, I might not can bring it right up out of my head, and I can't, and I can't remember exactly who gave me what gift, if y'all sent me a gift sometimes. And one time, I was making thank you cards, and apparently I got them switched up, and I sent the wrong thank you cards out to two people. And one person told me, and the other person didn't. And I was so embarrassed. Um, I think I had it filled out right, I hope, because usually I'll save the notes and things. But y'all, um, 
it's hard to keep up with sometimes. But I've talked forever, but it's been nice to be with y'all. I haven't seen y'all in a while. Um, I need to come on here a little bit more. Chris goes walking or somewhere every day. So I need to start making a point of coming on here and let's talk about a subject or something. You know, whether it's a recipe or something we did growing up or a, or a personal story. Um, we should talk to each other. So when Chris goes out on his little walks, we'll start talking more. Um, Joanne says that I'm helping her and she hasn't been out of the house in three weeks. And thank you, jo uh, Joanne. I hope you get out. And the more, um, I mean, if you don't feel like putting makeup on, if you don't get out of the house because you don't want to do your hair or your makeup, then uh, do like I did for a while, buy a wig or put on a doggone hat. You don't have to wear makeup. We're too vain. We think that we have to look great for everybody. Who cares what they think? Who cares? Just get out of the house. If getting out of the house means putting on a hat, not putting any makeup on, hey, I don't even care if you put your bra on. Get out of the house, okay? Um... I don't care, and people shouldn't either. And if they don't, if they do, then they're not worth your time. Don't think for a minute they're worth your time. We should love everybody, no matter what they look like, no matter who they are, no matter what they act like. I mean, it's just the craziest world we live in. It's so vain, and we don't need to be vain. Okay. Um. I guess I will sign off, and I appreciate y'all loving me for who I am. Um, today I made the, the comment, my battery's low, but today I made the comment, the reason I love my Collar Valley Cooks is the people on there that love me really love me, and they love me for who I am, and I just, I just love y'all. I really do, and I think y'all know I do. I do care for y'all. I'm not kidding. When I read stuff like this, I think of y'all. Um, I care about y'all. I care about your health, and I care about your feelings, and I care about your life, and um, I want to encourage you and love on you, and y'all know I'm here. Um, when I say I love you, I don't say it just to say it. I say it because I mean it. Um. Anyway, I guess I'm going to go. I'm sure Chris will be showing up any minute. I'm not sure how Marcy acted on his walking trip. I bet it was a hoot, and I'm sure he'll have it on video. So if you're not watching my husband's Nichols Retirement Empire, I'm telling you, sometimes I'm in them, and the kids are in them, and sometimes they're really funny. And um, you can see the different personalities in all of our lives if you watch Chris's show because he has, you know, more of all of us on his but anyway, I'm sure Marcy will be the star of the show tonight, uh, probably posted tomorrow. And um, I love all y'all. Hey, Amy. I love y'all. Bye. Y'all listen to what I told you in this book, y'all. Bye.